Hey, this is Nate Wells. And this is Drew Cove. Check out our podcast, that Go for Hockey podcast, for uh, the latest news and updates on University of Minnesota Hockey. You can find us on uh, iTunes, and we're also on the uh, Zone Coverage Podcast Network. That's elite. The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. They may be drinkers, Robin, but they're also human beings. Hell yeah, let's get Stinko. Welcome to Giles and the Goalie Podcast, live on location, our much-anticipated Giles and the Goalie in Vegas, hashtag G-A-T-G in Vegas, for those of you uh, who love to use your hashtags. I am Giles Farrell. I will be the guy slowly sipping on alcohol, not slowly, quickly sipping on alcohol through this one. Uh, Across the table from me is Ben Remington. Hello. Nothing special for Vegas, just still the, I keep the trademark. Uh, yeah, you don't mess with a good thing when you got to go under us. Uh, we're recording here at the Beer House in Las Vegas, which is right next to T-Mobile Arena. Lovely uh, 50-some-odd degree day here in Sin City. Beautiful. Very nice weather we've had. <laughs> yeah, really, it really has been. I mean, actually, we when we got in on Friday, we got told that it rained like all week before. Yeah, I know it rained on Thursday before I so, got here, but Thursday night was nice. It uh, very nice weather out here. Uh, late uh, late nights are a little brisk, but uh, it's a nice brisk. It's, it's nice. not like I hate everything brisk. Right. <laughs> there's a there's a difference between brisk and Vegas. And I can't feel my face, which is what the folks at home are experiencing this weekend. So yeah, not to not to say there's anything wrong right. with that. We've we've definitely experienced our fair share of can't feel my face. But so we have a lot to discuss on this podcast. <laughs> uh, but the uh, the first and probably most important thing to discuss on this podcast is recent life events. Really? Yeah. I mean, you and I have had recent. Notable life events. Sure. Uh, do you do you want to start since yours was technically first? Uh, like the conception was technically. Throws in yeah. air quotes. Uh, yeah, the conception. Don't go into was, detail, please. Oh, I was gonna tell the story, but all right. Tom's gonna be disappointed. Um, yeah. So, yeah, technically, uh, mine was a couple of months ago. So uh, we announced, and I, I think you know we've got most of our fans that follow us on Twitter, and they've seen me allude to it. I didn't make a grandiose announcement on Twitter. Yeah. itself but uh yeah we are me and Roz are pregnant and all that uh should be a lot of fun looking forward to it she is slogged through it a, a long weekend in Vegas with yeah. child she's a she's uh, a warrior so it has not been easy folks yeah <laughs> this is said pregnant Mrs. Remington yes um yeah it's been quite the experience being sober in Vegas um, luckily, everyone's kind of been adults about their intoxication levels. <laughs> well, mainly. enough when I'm around. I think the difference is, is that all of our friends that have been with us are professionals. Yeah, put and a that's the difference. Put an asterisk next to Mr. Farrell's name. Well, yes. yeah, I've got many friends, Giles included, that are <laughs> they know what they're doing with adult beverages. Yeah, let's put it that way. And it does help too that I have spent what two, three nights home at the hotel <laughs> yeah, sleeping yeah. by myself. Yeah, you let, at midnight you're like, all right, well, you yeah, guys go ahead. Send you guys off, and you usually stroll in around 5 a.m., so. Roughly, yeah. Place, yeah. But, yeah, so we are expecting uh, July. Any, uh, oh, let's hope for a not hot summer. <laughs> Oof. Good luck with that. Right. Any, are there any uh, hopes as to what said child would be well they're not going to be a wild fan i can tell you that um (laughs) i've made that decision anymore i've made that decision right off the bat uh gonna be raised as a golden knights fan (laughs) maybe uh no yeah i i I, you know we don't know uh boy or girl yet not that that makes a huge difference with that kind of thing but yeah i just uh i don't know it's, it's it's a really weird place to be in like just kind of uh having 
hopes and dreams for your child not really knowing what they are yet, you know, kind of thing. Like, anybody can hope for their kid to be a hockey player, can hope for their kid to be a, a doctor, whatever, you know. It, it just, but you don't know. Like, you have no idea. So it's just kind of like, you're just kind of excited for see what it turns out to be like. Like, it's, it's, oh. uh, even as you said, hockey player and doctor, all I could think about is the expense that that child is going to cost <laughs> us. <laughs> Those hockey fees are not cheap. And yeah. I was just going to say, loans, there's med uh, school. I was loans. just going to say, maybe they'll grow up to have a podcast with good audio. Well, yeah. no, no. That's I think that's genetic at this point. In our basement. Yes. <laughs> they will have a recording. Well video. into their forties. <laughs> yes. I got it. This is just this, just because it's you. I will just predict that said future child will go on to be a Vikings writer that oh my God. has a podcast about the Vikings. Yeah, uh, oh, no. The anger Ben's, coming from yeah. him right now. As much as I was very not kidding when I said my child will not be a Wild fan, my child will not be a Vikings fan either. They'll get to I'm the age of 18 try. and they'll have no clue what the try. NFL is. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to do everything I can we'll just in my black out Vikings games yeah. at our house all the time. I'm going to ask about all the time. They're going to. It's going to become some kind of secret thing where they go over to their friend's house to watch because they don't want me to find out and be disappointed. It's like a bad like Hallmark Scientology. Channel movie. <laughs> 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 Whenever they come home, they're like, what are these Vikings fans? Be like, we don't talk about that in this Yeah, household. okay, gotcha. Yeah, like I Scientology. You, <laughs> I thought you were talking about the religion as a whole. I was like, no, no. Well, we just lost all of our Scientologist listeners. Thanks, Ross. <laughs> yep. They're offended now. I think they're you never lost coming them back. Probably on episode yeah, well, two. Oh, one of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise oh is never God. listening to us. Thanks no. a lot. <laughs> he, uh, he gave up. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, other than that, we're good. Yeah, do, just, do you guys have any news yeah, to share well, at all? Yeah, with you guys. I mean, what other major life event could there be? I have life news as well. No, we're not having children. Because you <laughs> yeah. don't do that until after you're married. Well, yeah. Right? yeah. So we first comes yeah, well, what? We're, we're saving that for... Yeah. We wow, don't. this is really going down a rabbit hole. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are living in sin right now, oh, so yeah. we have that going for us. I yesterday was Sunday as we record here and on Sunday the Sabbath I consumed copious amounts of alcohol yes. and gambled on professional football so yes. I was really doing the Lord's work of making <laughs> sure I get a one way ticket straight to hell when this is all over but no, anyway yeah back to your story <laughs> good segue right. good yeah. segue Perfect. speaking of going to hell it. On uh, Friday, when we got into town, uh, Friday Friday evening, I asked the the lovely Jamie here next to me to be my wife, and she reluctantly agreed. I yes. agreed to it, yeah. After she asked you if you were tying your shoe. Yeah, I did. I yeah. kind of yelled at him. Say, let's hear the brief engagement story. I got so well, as first, we the first song. Uh, we wait at the we wait in front of the Bellagio fountains, and I also did have the assistance of Ben and Roz. To uh, one, smuggle the ring out here that to Las Vegas. Me. Yeah, that was a good smuggle. Roz was a uh, Roz was the MVP. Yep, she was indeed. And so we get out here. We have our secret handoff uh, next to the In and Out Burger. <laughs> it was very classy. It was actually in the hallway of the bathroom. Yeah, we. Uh, it was a very classic yes, handoff. As we yeah, as we left Jamie and Bennett in and out burger. So then we staked out a spot right in front of the Bellagio Fountains to uh, to do this, and uh, there's roughly what thirty some songs that they rotate when the they do the Bellagio Fountains. So in my head, I'm just going just something something nice. Not it doesn't have to be like a particularly favorite song. Just something nice and memorable and. Oh, it was memorable. I oh, get, yeah. I get, hey, big spender, which has no rhythm, and I have no clue what this is. So, it's a fantastic song. I'm kind of like, I don't know why you did it during that. Because well, you know, I feel like it should be our wedding song. Now. Yeah, as we audible. Who knew that it, the engagement was coming? And hey, big spender came I on. Wouldn't, yeah. It was quite entertaining to see just like the smoke coming from your ears. <laughs> and Ben leaned into me and said, you might want to just tell the group that we'll be staying for one more song because this would be terrible for Giles to do <laughs> during this song. So I did stake out the next song, which was only like, you know, 15 minutes later. Yeah, they go we didn't wait a long. that time, yeah. And so now my hope really was, please God, just be a nice song. Yeah. I get... The 
fountain rendition of Cher, Do You Believe in Love? It, it's just perfect. It's so perfect. I bust out laughing hysterically. <laughs> I turned and looked at Ben, and then I covertly sent him a message. I just said, I'm just bleeping doing it. Okay, because technically, isn't the song kind of about post like breaking up? Yeah, it's, life yeah, after love? it's a so, yeah. yeah, it's perfect. I loved it. <laughs> like that was fantastic. I would not want it any romance. better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, the love was in the title, so, so you really yeah, can't be exactly. too upset about it. Sunny and Cher are a great love story. Oh my gosh, yeah. for sure. So yeah. yeah. So I finally get down on one knee, and as I get down on one knee and take the ring out. She barks at me. You better not be tying your shoelace. <laughs> I just see you doing that. Like I could totally see that, and I'll be like, "Have you, you? been?" I'm not Jim Helper. Yeah, I was gonna say, have you been screwing with her like Jim on the office? No, for, like yeah. weeks. I have not. Just I want to live. <laughs> yeah, he probably would have died right there. Faking her out the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I did probably go over the line at times when trying to uh, get her away from the fact I was going to do it this weekend. Sure. Yeah. But that's understandable. Oh, yeah. I and, get it. and they could, like, I can tell you from they get over it eventually. Like, oh, yeah, you know, right? We do. Like, Roz desperately wanted to check the mail when I delivered my surprise, which was part of the surprise, and that ruined things. Oh, but, yeah. But, you know, so I had to kind of, you know, finagle things a little bit, but it worked oh, out. Sure. It, all it worked, worked out. out. Yeah, it, it was makes great. It's a great story. It and does. And big spender. Nothing and then the best, the best no. part was your friends <laughs> went to get beer at the CVS, yes. which, yeah, that sounds amazing, I know. That's Vegas. Yes. And you got a text asking, was the deed done? That's yeah. my favorite part, too. Yeah. And then if it else? was safe to come back yes. at, and if she said yes or if they should stay away longer. Nope. No. She yeah. got mad and threw it in right. the fountain. And yeah. then I ran in the street, got hit by a car. Yeah. So that we, happened. We made plenty of bodies floating in the Bellagio Pond <laughs> jokes about that, yeah. Vegas. We made it a memorable Vegas experience. Mm. Yes. So now you guys are going to have to get engaged in Minnesota, too, because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, I so know. this doesn't count, actually. I just wanted to go get married after that to have a share impersonator. <laughs> you guys could be the witnesses. We're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you remember when Ross and Rachel got married in Vegas? And they were talking, they were discussing it at Central Park, and Phoebe's like, oh, don't worry about it. When you get in Vegas, married in Vegas, that's not real. <laughs> and everyone goes, yes, it is. And she goes, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly, yep. I mean, we, we could get it annulled, annulment. right, too? Like, we could just do it. Then. Yeah, that, I mean, the I have some phone numbers if you need annulment numbers. Oh, perfect. Right? Good to know. Good to I know. I have them on file just in case. Yeah, she's got them, she's got them programmed into her phone just in case. <laughs> No, no do you still have the number for Coke that we saw outside the Flamingo? I do, I yeah. do. I, there, it's placed like three different places around the Flamingo. Yeah. That was my favorite advertisement of the night. Yeah. Just spray painted on the side of the Flamingo, Coke, and a phone number. I don't know why he didn't propose under that sign. Like, that <laughs> would have been so... Hey, you still I really, take engagement pictures. Yeah, I really didn't feel so like true. getting down on one knee with 30-story photos of Donnie and Marie looking <laughs> over <laughs> yes. me. Yes. I'm sorry. That's a little bit creepy because it's so incestual. Just watching your every I, move. Yeah, I can't... No, I'm sorry. Not... No. <laughs> that's just... That's too much. Sure. Like, anyway... But apparently, so big spender was too much. Well, it just sends the wrong <laughs> message, you know. Like, he doesn't want to tell I've you he got the ring, ring out of a gumball machine. But. I've seen the ring. It could be an appropriate sign, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's still materialistic a little. Oh, I feel and like. I will say, Giles did good job on the ring. Okay, he that's did. Good. He did fantastic. So thank you. You did good. So congratulations, guys. Mm, thank Thanks. You. Congrats to yeah. you guys. Congratulations. This podcast days are numbered. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Thanks to <laughs> think of where we started five years ago. Now we're here. I know, right? Talking about prostate exams. Oh, speaking oh, of no, prostate no, exams. Oh, no, not going down that road today. All right. Hey, Tom. And, and nurses turning off week, the microphones. Yeah. <laughs> nurses Week is in May. Save it. Save it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's our, uh, that's our life news that we have here, and uh, we can uh, – move right along to uh, Minnesota Wild news because we have a whole hell of a lot to to get to. As the Minnesota Wild fans file into the bar. Yes. They're, in they're filling up in here, yeah. They're all passing us, though, so they probably have no idea what the hell we are. <laughs> right. uh, As well they shouldn't. That's fair. It, uh, it's a good time for a day off because uh, I think emotionally they might have been a little bit um, uh, uh, done. Can you be quiet down there? I don't know. I couldn't hear. 
All right, we're back. We are, as you can probably tell, no longer in the bar setting that we were recording in <laughs> previously. <laughs> uh, ben and I, uh, when we were just a few minutes into the next segment, uh, were asked uh, ever so not kindly by the bar manager to cease and desist, mm-hmm. citing his whatever bloody contractual obligations he had uh, to not do any kind of broadcast from his establishment. So we had to stop our podcast. So that's that's why we are now in a much more quiet setting. With cheaper drinks, though. Right. But uh, uh, thank you to everyone who did come out to our gathering at uh, Unnamed place that I'm going to take a (laughs) dump on on Twitter for the rest of eternity. Um, But uh, we did uh, we did have a good time. We did have a good time at the Vegas Wild game. That was very fun. Obviously, we were starting that recording before and then we've had to come back here afterwards just because of time constraints. So Mm -hmm. we're going to have a quicker show here just to kind of get through everything and get on with our evening. But uh, yeah, that's why we've had a sudden change in the audio sound, as I'm sure you're familiar with. But anyway, uh, what we were discussing when we so ever so rudely were cut off was we started to discuss the Nino Niederreiter trade mm-hmm. as uh, the Minnesota Wild traded Nino Niederreiter to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for Victor Rask, uh, mm-hmm. center Victor Rask, mm-hmm. and... We were just getting warmed up in terms of <laughs> rants and when we were stopped. So we didn't uh we didn't have anything overly great said yet, but uh I think we're gonna come to that now. But I wrote about this Friday evening. I should say Friday morning. I didn't get to post it till Friday evening, but this was as about as big of an L as you could take from a trade by the Minnesota Wild. And, yeah, you needed to make a trade to shake up your roster and blah, blah, blah. But, man, like, you really undersold Nino Niederreiter. And he's now going to a place where he's going to thrive, a very analytically sound team, the Carolina Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. They always have little things to kind of work out there, but... He's going to thrive, and in exchange, the Wild are getting Victor Rask, a center who had six points to his name all season, been a complete wreck since he signed a huge contract extension with them. And Paul Fenton, in his conference call, literally just said that we're hoping a change of scenery does him good. He can Hopefully he can find his offense again. It's like, hmm. why do you want to be introducing your new acquisition as – we hope a change of scenery can fix his problems. That's not a good way to start. And I get it. Like, I I see those of you out there who are like, well, maybe, you know, the trade can kind of shake things up and, you know, whatever. But I don't see the need for Victor Rask. Like, I don't get it. I don't get the trade, like, He's not a good center, and you have plenty of other people who can play center, and now you're offsetting, like, Charlie Coyle, who was playing pretty well at center with Zach Parisi, who really preferred to play with him. And Mm -hmm. it just seems like a huge, huge L for the Wild. And, you know, time will tell, but woof. Like, the only only thing out of this was the Wild were saving at $1.25 in cap space, which... You know, cool, whatever. You can afford the next buyout with that money. Great. <laughs> I will say I'm rather impressed, Giles. I don't know that people would have necessarily picked up on you know, us recording before on drink one, and now we're recording on what drink? Many. Yes. <laughs> several. Yeah. Several, several, many. Anyway, so, yeah, about the trade, it, uh, you know, this is what I fear when people want to make changes for change sake. You know what I mean? Like this and is we got that. We yeah, got that at the end of Chuck Fletcher with the uh, Pomeranzo Scandella, uh, Felino Ennis trade. trade. Yeah, 
this is what I fear when people just scream and and you know you can't even deny there's those people out there because we see them on Twitter you know that's where they live that's where those trolls are literally scream at the top of their lungs at this team team to make changes shake things up you got to make changes you can't keep doing the same thing well this is the kind of thing that can happen and and you know neither one of us was really all that upset with the Pontus Aberg trade. I think that was a decent trade, it, and it, you know it was what it was. I mean, I'm not especially heartbroken on giving up on Justin Clues, but that's I a trade where I'm like, well, I know you are. <laughs> Most Gopher fans are, but that's a trade where I'm like, okay, like you know, not a whole lot of risk there. Like that's fine. I, I you know, that's a nice little addition to the depth that they might need. But the Nino trade is just like, you know, this is the kind of trades that if you're in the position, so we've talked about the the Wild and where they're going, you know, in the long term, that kind of thing. How can the Wild become that contending team? Well, it's number one, it's n- it's not making trades like this. Number two, it's making trades like this only getting the better end of it. Like the Nino trade originally, where they got him for Cal Clutterbuck. You need to make a bunch of trades like that. Look at what Nashville did. You know, Nashville never picked super, super high. Granted, they had Seth Jones kind of fall in their lap. But that's what they did. They, they had one time where he fell in their lap. They had a good pick fall in their lap. They trade him for Ryan Johansson. They get extremely lucky with the Philip Forsberg trade. They get extremely lucky that Mark Bergman was taking crazy pills and gave them P.K. Subban. Like that's, those are the kind of deals you need to make if you don't have that Connor McDavid, that Sidney Crosby, that Alexander Ovechkin. These, these are the kind of deals you need to make. And instead, in this trade, on a very lower level, granted, this isn't Philip Forsberg, this isn't P.K. Subban, but they got fleeced in this deal. And that's... That's what you need to not do. You need to do the opposite of that to compete when you don't have a generational talent or a couple of homegrown superstars at least. You know, when you're an old team looking for that one last shot, you need to make trades like that, not be on the losing end of trades like this. I think maybe one of the redeeming, you know, not a redeeming quality, but like one of the things that maybe makes this trade a little more enticing to the Minnesota Wild and Paul Finn is that if you buy out Victor Rask's contract at some point it's much more of a minimal cap hip than Nino Niederreiter because his Niederreiter's salary is kind of all over the board and I'm not saying this is a good thing as you're about to choke me to death you're pissing me off but I'm just I'm trying to find (laughs) reasons that this was done and I I'm not saying these are good reasons. I'm just no. trying to find reasons. Like, I wrote an article for Crying Aloud on Zone Coverage of saying, like, this is a complete disaster. And I know, I've, I'm sorry, I've been out of the loop for a few days. Tony Abbott had an, wrote an article on Hug, not Hug, uh, The Athletic about the Victor Rask trade. And it's just something you... Mm, Ben's looking at the buyout, the buyout calculator that I pulled up, and it would be 1.3 yeah, a year, six, roughly. Six years after this, <sighs> it's bought out. But I'm just trying to find reasons, and I, a lot of these are stretch reasons. And trying to objectively find a good reason for this trade is, I, I don't know. And Paul Fenton saying we need more centers, can't have many more of those. Like, are you maybe hinting at you're going to trade Eric Stahl, like you have no confidence in Koivu, like right. you've clearly had enough of Jewel Eriksson Act because right. you are going to probably fire him into the sun oh, at this, some point Yeah, here. this trade's kind of a death kiss for him. Like, clearly, I think he's seen enough of any of his centers to say, I don't know what I have, so I need more. That's That's maybe something else we're seeing here. But... You've given up a winger who is really good in terms of puck possession and shots and you know, just just a lot of a lot of little things and you know, you can dog on Niederreiter for some slumps he's had. He's had a lot of slumps in his mm-hmm. time here and mm-hmm. that's, you know, deserved. But you know, he was still doing a lot of things behind the play and I never felt like it was justified that he often got fired into the bottom six notably the fourth line and so I guess my hope for him is he does find a good home in Carolina that you know he stays you know in the top six and he 
that's where he thrives. And I never really felt like he got a totally fair shake here, but I don't know. It's it's a frustrating trade just from trying to find an objective point to it because there is yeah. none. Victor Rask is a complete disaster. I'm sorry. Like, Carolina is one of the better puck possession teams in the league. Victor Rask was the second worst player in Carolina in terms of puck possession. He had four bloody points on at even strength this year. Alex Stalock has bloody two points. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, I'm feeling F-bombs coming on, and I have to filter them, so That's they fair. come out as bloody. So I'm That's fine. It's sorry very if this comes off as more it's British very, podcast. Very Premier League but, of you. I mean, I did just bet on the Champions League, but <laughs> I, it's just so – I don't get it. And I said this in the article. If this isn't a precursor to another trade, then this is a complete loss. I, I agree with you to a point. I think even if it is a precursor to another trade, it sucks. Um, if this is insurance for Eric Stahl, whether you deal him or let him walk – it still doesn't make any sense. That's some pretty lousy insurance. Exactly. I mean, that's like, you know, that's terrible. Like, uh, the, so that's just either, getting like the cheapest insurance policy <laughs> you could get on a home, and then you're just like, right. oh, there's no kind of. I mean, this is like the that car insurance scam where they just tell you that you're extending your used car's warranty, and then they never call you back. Like, that's what the kind of insurance that is. It's just it doesn't make you know. Okay, you can never have too many centers. You know what? I kind of agree with that. I do That's agree with that. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. But and and and, and it, if if it means you move Eriksson Ek down or you move him to wing, perhaps. Um, okay. I mean, that's not a, a negative. I, I don't think. But, I mean, it, it doesn't justify a bad trade. That's just it. It doesn't justify a bad trade. None of it does. You can never have too many centers. Okay, still bad trade. We saved one point two million dollars a year. Okay, great. Still bad trade. You know, he's a year younger than Nino. Like I care. It's still a bad trade. Like there's there's nothing that it's like you said. It's hard to objectively find any positive because there was no, there wasn't any good explanation for this deal. Like any any defense of this deal just isn't good enough. There's some deals out there where you can defend. Like tonight, they made the stupid trade for what's his name, Brad Hunt. Uh, let's segue into that, Brad Hunt. And a sixth round pick exchanged for a fifth round pick. Like, okay, that's a completely meaningless trade. But they say, hey, you know, we're one Nick Sealer away from having, uh, geez, I don't even know who would be the lefty coming up from Iowa. But they obviously weren't happy with it, you know. And and, and the price is you moved back around in next year's draft. Okay. You know, is it a good trade? No. But you can defend it. You know what I mean? You can say, hey, you know, we're one Ryan Suter injury. We're one uh, Jonas Brodin injury. Any of the left-handed D, we wanted you know, an NHL-ready guy to be our fourth left-handed D in the organization. Okay, that's fine. You know, if he's a left-handed Nate Prosser, you could do a lot worse for a guy who's going to be sitting in the press box most nights. But you can defend it. And that's the thing about the Nino trade. Like, you, you can't defend that. You can defend giving up Justin Clues. For Pontus Aberg, you can defend that. I mean, there's no guarantee Klus even sticks in the NHL at any given time. I, I, I think he might. A here. No, I, you know, you're right. You're right, and that's just it. And that makes the trade even more kind of understandable because he was never going to get a chance anyway. You weren't. They weren't going to call him up. Next one is Sam Annis, sadly. Yeah, right. no, you're absolutely right. I, I would love to see Sam Annis give us. I mean, he's hurt right now, which is really probably the worst of it because he's never going to get a chance because he was hurt, but... I'd love to see Ennis come up, but yeah, you're in the same. You're exactly right. Which is not fair because he always should have had at least gotten a shake. At yes, absolutely. The NHL and he never did. Which is well, I mean, I, I think Ennis still has a, sh- a chance. Right, but I don't I think, think you're that right. chance is coming with this team. You're probably right. I don't think so. You're probably right. I'd, yeah. Uh, so what do you think? I, so I, I kind of glazed over all three trades. You did. <laughs> That's very impressive. <laughs> What did you, you think of the Aberg Clues trade? I mean, I, you said Clues was expendable, but I, I know you like Clues. I mean, we love. I, I do. I, I arguably have a bias to Justin Clues. <laughs> the Clues loose and, and whatnot. And you know, even when I talked with him last year, he's just a very good quote. Like I asked him six questions, and I got five minutes worth of you know audio out of him. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's very impressive for yeah. a player. But anyway, 
that's not the point. I know that doesn't. <laughs> you know, just that's just what I was. Always the media, <laughs> right? And it was just that's what I got told, you know, by our friend Nate Wells, who said he's a very quotable guy, and you get to talk to him, and he just, you know, very nice guy. So I'll say that. And he had, should he have deserved maybe a shot? Yes, absolutely. But again, you know, the Wild are just so strapped for whatever reason that they can't, you know, give anyone a chance. You know, as our friend Brian Reynolds was giving us junk about today on Twitter with Alex Tuck leading the Golden Knights and scoring, mind yeah. you. Yeah. You know, like, these guys are going to come up. They're never going to get their shot because there's always going to be somebody else in the way. So yeah. what's the damn point? But anyway, um, Pontus Aberg, like, I'll, I'll say I don't get what the Ducks are doing. That's true. Because they – he was the second leading scorer on their team. He had, sure, he had been scratched four games in a row before he was traded, but – That was a doghouse – personality thing, right. I think. Not you a know, Randy Carlyle's just thing. full crap. You know, That's true, yeah. I mean, honest. you have to consider the source with that. Like, I wish there was a futures bet on the next NHL coach to be fired because <laughs> I'd throw money down. There is somewhere. I mean, we have not seen it here, but right. there is somewhere. I mean, we found good NHL prop bets today. We did. We'll get we, to that, yeah. We, we did. didn't find Randy Carlyle getting fired next. But whatever. <laughs> like, Pontus Aberg, he has a good shot. He's got good speed, and he's a right-handed shot on the power play that the Wild needs. He's hugely needed. And I think there'll be good things there, but ultimately, I don't think that's like you know the missing piece of the puzzle or anything like that. No, but no, I think that's a good that's a good move to make. And obviously, there's a lot of familiarity there with Paul Fenton and him being a Nashville draftee. So there's there's that. So not not a whole lot to complain about. And I did write another piece about him on zone coverage, kind of looking over his his numbers and whatnot. So there, you know, you can go read that. And I I think that's a good trade. We had a good trade. We had a bad trade. And we have a trade I don't know anything about because when the Brad Hunt <laughs> trade came through, my phone was dead. So <laughs> right. I told I don't you know at dinner. Anything. I told yeah. Josh at dinner, and he goes, "Who?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's exactly what I said." Who? Apparently, he's a Bemidji Brad State Hunt alum. Sounds like a referee's name. I think it was a WCHA referee. Might have if been Nate Wells is listening, he'll back me up on. Might that. have been a WCW referee. Right. He'll. Uh, I, there was a. Hunt. There was a Hunt referee in the WCHA. I don't know if it's Brad, uh. but there was a Hunt. And <laughs> if Nate is listening, he will give me the he right He will name. know. He will. It was Hunt and Shepard. That was the pair that always did, like, big gopher uh, series. Ah, that does sound familiar. I wouldn't know specifically, but I, I rings a bell. Anyway. Anyway, so that's, I don't know, that's, that's our takes on... So they the traded for a referee. Good? Yeah. Good? We got a referee. Yep. Maybe... Maybe Paul Finn got scared by the NFL games over the weekend. And he <laughs> he really he had to get one on the payroll because right. he saw he how much that helped the, the team. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That's that's why he did that. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's I don't all we got. Him. Yeah, I don't blame him. That's all we got. I don't know who Brad Hunt is. Yeah. No, but again, you know, like I talked about, you can defend that trade because what they what they gave up was moving back one round, and it's like okay, you still yeah, have the same amount of picks. Like going from the fifth to sixth round is not going to hurt you. Yeah. I can I can defend that trade because they gave up so little on the other end, and so it's like, all right, well, you know, I don't really want that guy on the team. I don't really care if he's on the team, but at least they didn't give up much. He's there. Yeah, he's there. Nate Prosser on the left side. You said it. Right. Too. Yeah. I mean, if he's if he's in the James Tripper Memorial press box all season long, yeah, okay. he's still worth it because he's depth, and that's fine. Like it, it's such a low price to pay. But yeah, anyway, so you win some, you lose some. You, sometimes you make three trades in three days, uh, or three trades in four days, and uh, we're fine. No, jeez. How many days have we been to Vegas? Oh, my God. We could write a small book on win some, <laughs> lose some. That's all I'll say. Oh, God, we've been here a long time. Yeah, uh, yeah we have. Yeah, speaking of win some, lose some, we, had, we did have some. What? So, looking at the last week for the Minnesota Wild last week and change. Uh, they came out last Monday against Philadelphia. Remember our booth cast? Yes. Game? Yeah. How oh, can I forget? Oh, so long ago. God, that was they, a week ago that, today. That Holy feels crap. like an eternity ago. I'm not going to lie. Like, that feels so long ago, and that probably had more to do with the fact that I had a long week and then was fly out to Vegas on Friday morning, uh. and then it's just turned into a long weekend. Yes, it has. But... Anyway, that's not the point. People don't want to. <laughs> people want to listen to my personal life. They turn into the uh, Russo podcast for that. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Flyers 7, Wild 4. We were absolutely floored in the Egan Studios <laughs> yes, uh, from we were. the booth cast of what the hell happened there. <laughs> oh, um, my God. I, What was it? Wayne Simmons had two goals. He had, had, a, no, he had a hat trick. Nolan Patrick had a between the legs goal, like just an absolute dumpster fire hockey game for yeah, the Minnesota Wild. They were up two to nothing in that game. Zucker so and Eck put them up two nothing, and then they just absolutely crap bet. That's that's the dump of all dumps right there for the Minnesota Wild in terms of crapping the bed. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like especially in the wake of that Detroit game that we were yes. irate about in the last podcast, and you know whatever. That was the big thing for me was the psychological aspect of it because, like, you just no-showed a home game against a bottom, 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 on the road. bottom. No, 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 Detroit. Oh, I'm sorry. You just no-showed a home game against the bottom, 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 bottom of the league, you know. And so your coach comes out and, you know, basically questions. Oh, he just fucking I mean, he... <laughs> him a new one. Whoa! He, uh, <laughs> you have to mark the time yeah, on whatever. that one. Uh, uh, yeah, like he, he comes out in questions and, and says, like, you know, it, we didn't, we had no effort, there was no effort at all. He just basically just threw his entire hockey team under the bus. Like, not a couple of guys, not you know, bounces didn't go our way. Blah blah blah. You know, oh, I thought we played hard, but you know, blah blah. blah and, or, or we need to do better at this. Or we need to do better at that. It was I question my entire team's effort. And then they come out on Monday against Philly and just lay the steamiest dump that you've ever seen in your entire life. Like, when you we talking that night, I forgot about it until now. It was the dog turd K-Cup. <laughs> 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 so the joke you made on Boothcast, this is what you're missing when you join us on Boothcast, which we will do again. We'll, we'll let you know. Yeah. Uh, but we, talk, we made jokes about the, the Vikings K-Cups. And then they had wild cake cups, and we were like, "Well, what would the wild cake cup flavor be?" And I was like, "Oh, you know, it's a blend of of coffee and poop." And I'm like, "Wait, no, 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 no! It's not a blend because that would taste like kind of poopy." You know, it, it's it's K cups. It's a pack of K cups, and half of it, um, let's say half, less than half, a third of it, a quarter of it, <laughs> is really, 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 really good. It's the finest roasted arabica beans known to man, f- straight from Colombia, off of a donkey. Uh, and the other, you know, half, third, quarter, whatever, um, the other part is a dog turd in a K-cup. And that's what you get for your coffee. There that's you Minnesota go. Wild. That is it. That's Minnesota Wild coffee. It's better than Skull Coffee still, but that's their uh, brand of coffee. So Minnesota Wild, after that, they come back at home the next night against a very hapless Los Angeles Kings team. They win 3-2 to two in a shootout. I don't think I f- anybody felt good about that no. one. No. As you shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, Jonathan Quick had an unreal night. I will say that. Jonathan Quick looked like he suddenly Yeah, he looked suddenly like the was, old Jonathan Quick. He looked like he was 2011 Jonathan Quick. But, um, I mean, they had a win in a shootout, and had they lost that game in a shootout, I think it would have been much more panic mode. Not only that night, but when Thursday happened. Like, I think it would have changed the complexion of the week for this team if they would have not have won that shootout. If they would have lost that shootout and gotten the loser point, I think it's almost a completely different narrative for the week. I mean, I still think the week is a huge L, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would feel so much worse if they would have so got Wednesday, the win. So Wednesday we get the uh, Aberg trade, and then Thursday before the game, Nino Niederreiter was about to take his pregame nap. And he, gets, <laughs> he gets a call that says he's traded. And then the Wild absolutely come out, and there was no life to that game against Anaheim. They lose 3 nothing. The Ducks score in like the first 10 minutes. Three in the first 10 minutes. Stalock gets pulled for Dubnik. Didn't they score two in like the first minute? It was, yeah, it was bad. And it was just, there was nothing to do after that. Like I was, you know, watching the game. I was doing gifts like normal, like I should be. <laughs> and there, there was nothing after that. Like there no. was very minimal things. No. And, you know, they had... Two goals and like what? What is that? Twenty seconds. Yeah. And then you know they had the third before the eight minute mark of the first period. And that was it. Yeah. That was all she wrote, and that was a game you needed to win because Anaheim had lost twelve in a row. They <laughs> were a sinking ship, and 
they're a team you're still competing against for wild card spot. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, that's an abysmal thing. I don't care who the hell just got traded. Yeah. And they completely lay an egg. Yeah. Utter, but, utter disaster. Yeah. And I, I, I don't. I don't fault Boos Pedro for starting Alex Daylock. He he acknowledged on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Dubnik was tired. He is yeah. tired. Yep. Yeah, for then it's the way he, you know, the game on Monday where he got pulled. How, and I'm torn as to how I should be looking at this. And Am Staloc I, did play pretty decent on Tuesday against the Kings. He was okay. Right. He had his moments, you know, where you'd crap yourself a bit, but that's Staloc. But he was okay. Am I looking at this as Bruce Pedroe is finally saying, fine, I'll play my backup? Or Bruce Pedroe is saying to Paul Fenton, yo, I need a backup goalie so I can, like, Sit this guy. And don't extend the one we have. Right. Um, no, I think you're absolutely right. I think it is him acknowledging, like, hey, I can't ride Devin Dubnik that hard. And so he does. Phrasing. Are we still doing phrasing? Phrasing. <laughs> and so I can't ride him that hard, and so he gets pulled out of the game on Monday. You go to Stalek on Tuesday because you have to. It's a back-to-back. You just pulled Dubnik the night before. Like, you could have started Dubnik, but Stalek's the right way to go. And, st- and Stalek plays pretty well. And so then you think, well, you know, maybe I should give this chance, this kid more games. And then you go out on Thursday, and he has the kind of game that he had, and it's just like, you know, this is why, this is what prevents Bruce Boudreaux from playing his backup more often, is, is crap like this, where he finally gets a little bit of trust in the kid, gives him back-to-back starts after putting him in for the starter. He puts him in for the starter, gives him a start, gives him another start in a row. When have we seen that out of Bruce? For a true backup. I mean, we've seen that maybe one or two times. Right. Not a lot. You know, not often. Um, still, like maybe a little bit last year in December might have gotten one or two uh, right before Dubnik was hurt. But anyway, yeah. And then he just completely blows it. Like, just, I didn't see the goals. Like I said, I was I was actually flying out here that night. I caught the third period, but the damage had already been done. Dubnik looked good in the third period, but still like had already stunk up the first two. John so Gibson looked great. John Gibson, that ga- that's what that game was. I mean, honestly, John Gibson. that game was John Gibson. That that game was Alex Dale. That was, that game was a goaltender duel. I mean, that that game, the difference in that game was goaltending. You know, the Wild played lifeless, but they played well enough to win. And John Gibson was out of his mind. And um, get out of your mind. Yeah, and Alex Dale clearly wasn't. So. That's what that was, and and I think that there, I think you're right. I think that there's a little bit to it. Uh, I think with the lifelessness, my theory on it. I mean, they did just make the Nino trade, and I think there's, I think the, I think the guys in the locker room know. I think they know. I think they know that Nino was good, and yeah. I'm sure maybe some of them didn't know much about Victor Rask, but that's got to hurt. I mean, he's been with this team how long? Six years. Yeah, four or five years. S- yeah, something like that. So like, yeah, five. Probably more like five. Um. So, yeah, I mean, it's got to – you know, you've played with all those guys for how long? How many of those guys are Forever. all the same nucleus? Like t- 10 of them, 12 of them? Matt, Matt Dumba was just – Oh, I know. My God, as, Dumba's tweet was as so as all, amazing. As, like, Dumba had a had a very touching, like, goodbye tweet to Nita. We didn't hit this when yeah. we were talking about the Nita right trade. But Dumba had a very, like, you know, sad, cryptic – you know, need a writer goodbye tweet. You know, as they're they're friends as as they should be, and yeah, and whatnot, and you know, and then Matt Dumba actually talked to the media before, um, I think it was Thursday's game. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry, Saturday's game. But okay. Anyway, the the tweet that uh, Dumba had was he tweeted my guy, and he added need a writer, and he said gonna miss you, Doug, and a handshake. Hashtag most interesting man in the world, and it was the <laughs> gif of them shaking hands after the goal earlier this year. Yeah, hits you in the field. Ph- phenomenal gif, by the way. And Absolutely phenomenal. Did you make that one, by the way? No, that was the <laughs> that was the watermarked NHL oh, gif. Oh yeah, okay. Which you know, Steph does a great job at the NHL. Oh, that's right, she does that. Yep, that's right, Not Steph. Not not saying I make great gifts, but I'm just saying <laughs> like, she's. If you're gonna be outclassed by anybody, she's the legend. If you're gonna like, be outclassed by anyone, let's, yeah, let's put that let out it, there. Let it be like staff. I'm not, gotcha. I'm not ever trying to say it's I'm fair. better than her. It's but fair. anyway, and then Nita Ryder met with the media, and not Nita Ryder, Dumba, sorry, Dumba, yeah. Jesus, it's just oh my lord. You've had a few drinks. Yeah, they had Moscow mules over the buffet, and I made sure my. <laughs> You know, my bottomless Moscow mules counted. 
someone gave you an all you can drink offer over dinner and that just like I don't think they knew what they were getting into. Correct. So Dumba met with the media and he did it on Friday. I'm sorry. Oh, that's weird. And you know, he talked about, you know, the fight that he was in. Yeah. And then he talked about the need rider trade. Did he confirm that the injury was from the fight? He said it was somewhere in there. He he didn't know exactly where, but okay. you know, that's I don't know how you when you blow your peck fighting, but I mean, it's possible. It's as possible as any other thing else, I suppose. But you know, one of the first tweets I saw from his media scrum was, you know, saying even talking about it now, I'm getting emotional. Everything about it sucks. Obviously, referencing his fight with Matthew Kachuk. Yeah. And then he did have another one, which I'm quickly trying to scan for. But essentially, the gist of what he said was, "It stinks. All my friends are being traded." And <laughs> if that isn't just a straight like clock to the face, <laughs> you know that's that's wow. sad. You know, I, I it was Wait, really sad. Who uh, else was he talking about? Hala? I don't know, but who else has been maybe, traded maybe recently? Maybe he's alluding at you know some that's coming, but I can't. I mean, was he that close with Palmer and Scandella? I he think must have been. Scandella, he was very I think, close I think with. He might, yeah, he must have been with Scandella. Yeah, here it is from Chad Graff. Seems like all my friends get traded. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Except for Brodeen, of course. Can't trade Jonas Brodeen. Right. Why would you trade Jonas Brodeen? You that's impossible you to trade Jonas Brodeen. can't trade Jimmy. Don't trade Jonas Brodeen. I'm joking. Uh, that's, you know, sad. Wow. Sorry. That That's brutal. And then last, uh, you know, Saturday, you know, the weekend we had Hockey Day in Minnesota actually yeah. didn't... Uh, didn't get to really take None at part in any of the festivities None out here on the West Coast, but uh. um, obviously another another great day for for Minnesota and a great great job by FSN. I know we rail on them a lot for their hockey coverage. Deservedly, but Hockey Day Minnesota is their crown jewel, and they do a really good job with that. So I will you know give them credit to when it's due that yeah they do a phenomenal job of putting Hockey Day Minnesota on and. You know, deservedly so. So they obviously another fine job done with Bemidji hosting this year. Next year is going to be at Parade Stadium. Yeah, in that's really cool. That's that's very really cool. Really cool. Uh, but uh, obviously the the cap on the game was on the day I should say is the Wild win two to one against Columbus Blue Jackets. Jordan Greenway, Zach Parise score in the first period. Artemi Panarin scored in the second period for Columbus. Uh, Wild hang on to win two to one. Uh, not. Not probably the prettiest of games from how I understood, but the Wild get two points and they kind of, you know, somewhat salvage their their garbage week. So there's there's that. And then Saturday was a blur for me. Same. Do you remember any Saturday? I remember briefly going to oh, Fremont yeah. Street. We did. We went downtown. That's why I don't remember much and of Saturday. Yeah. I'm, I remember your friend, yeah. you know, putting Paul Korea in an F-bomb in a <laughs> sentence and... <laughs> That you was very af- upset about that. That was after I had, yeah. you know, Several gone drinks. over my limit. Several drinks, yes. It didn't. It didn't go so well for him. No. So he, I, he thought it was pretty funny how upset you got. No, it's not funny. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I thought it was. Uh, funny. And then we have uh, the the game we just saw here today: Minnesota Wild, Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Wild win four to two over the Golden Knights. Uh, Alex Tuck, you may have heard of him, gets the scoring underway in the first period. Uh, Marcus Foligno. Scores in the second period to open <laughs> for Minnesota. Don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Eric Stahl uh, gets on the board. Max Pacioretty ties it late in the period. Charlie Coyle gets the game winner. Miko Koiva with an empty netter. Yeah. Uh, but uh, big uh, big win for the Wild. 4-2 to two over the Golden Knights. They now have won, what, 3 out of 4 against? No, I'm sorry. 4 out of 5 Yes. against the Golden Knights all time. They lost once and, in a uh, yeah, shootout. Earlier this year. Yep. Eric Halla. Yes. Shootout winner. Indeed, but, uh, so that was, Yeah. We're going to dig into all that just a little bit on this, uh, just because we we got to go to the game and we kind of got to do the whole game experience with, you know, the Golden Knights and, and T-Mobile Arena. So yeah. we'll we'll kind of hit on that for a minute here, just kind of what, what we thought, maybe the game, not so much the game in general, but, you know, the arena and the atmosphere and, Blah 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 to 
end out this podcast. So yeah. we'll we'll kind of go into that for a minute here. But uh, yeah, the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, we got to take in uh, T-Mobile Arena uh, here on uh, Monday. A uh, very very electric atmosphere. Very great game ops. Tons and of fun game production by the Golden Knights. Tip your cap to them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, just being around town all weekend, you know, you really got to tip your cap to to Las Vegas in general. They've really done incredible work just taking this team in and oh, man. really embracing hockey in general. And I think there were a lot of skeptics, you and I included, and kind of how Vegas would take in a hockey team. And you may have been. Okay, well, I may have <laughs> been. I was. I was very. In, I was very famously. But over the top for Vegas because I thought it would go this well, and they have clearly uh, taken taken that very well. They've yeah, incredible. Anywhere you go, you see Vegas Golden Knights stuff. You know, you go to the game, everybody's dressed head to toe and in, in Vegas stuff. And I took part in a in a autograph session yeah on Saturday with sure. a former. Wild player. <laughs> uh, you don't want to talk about it. That uh, you know where, it, you know you just see all these people coming out and you know they're they're just dressed head to toe in Golden Knight stuff. They they've got it all and it's so impressive to see. It's so impressive to see, you know, a team out here in the desert that's just so immensely popular just having player appearances. I know that is absolute nonsense to you know midwesterners <laughs> that players would go out with the common folks and sign some autographs and junk but right you know it was just so so neat to see how vegas has really taken in the golden knights and i, I feel like the raiders are almost just going to be a, you know kind of an afterthought in this town like i think well the golden knights are you know, kind of the darlings of the town now. Yeah. And football is football. You know, everybody loves football. That's blatantly obvious. But the Raiders are the Raiders, and sure, they'll be, you know, popular. But I, I don't think you can replace the popularity that the Golden Knights have built up here in their first year in change. No, I mean, I think the Raiders will do fine. Don't get me wrong. They have John Gruden. Yeah, well, Test for the, them. yeah, for the same reasons that the the Knights did well. I think that this town is a good sports town, and I think that it's a good sports town for a lot of reasons. And and uh, you know we saw it tonight. So, um, but yeah, you really got to have to be impressed. I mean, I, I thought it would go well in Vegas. I didn't even know it would go this well. Like I, I think even the you know outside of you know obscene politicians and maybe some Homer fans. Anybody outside of this town? And Gary Bevan. <laughs> yeah, Gary. Well, he, at least he thought it would go well enough. Um, anybody outside of this town who thought it would go well, this exceeded their expectations. Even if, even for those of us who thought it would go well. So, uh, yeah, just tremendous. I mean, it, all weekend long. This is the first time I've been here since the Knights have been in town, and uh, very very supportive. Like it's it's that is very much their team, and and I th- yeah, a little bit of that will change when the Raiders come. I understand that. I mean, it's go- it's going to. There's just no two ways about it. It's the NFL, um, but. I do think that this they really have done a fantastic job of adopting the team. I've gone to many West Coast cities, and the West Coast is kind of weird for sports. But I've gone to many West Coast cities, and I've never seen support for a team like this. Like I, I've never seen this much. You know, granted, it's it's pretty uh, consolidated where we're at on this trip, but right, uh, it's it's incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible the support that it, that you see for this team here. Um, and I, I think the game product reflected that. I think that that. You can't have a in arena experience like they have without that kind of buy in from local no. fans. In year two, no less. I mean, it was like that in year one, but like it's still there in year two, and it's an incredible buy in from the fans. And you just, it makes for an incredible arena experience. And, and we know, we kind of known about that. Ken from our friend from Sinbin had, had told us that it was, it was the atmosphere good. was just very, very good. And, and I believed him, but that even exceeded my expectations. Too. Right. Like it was it was better than I thought it would you be. Know, he, he did paint a pretty clear picture of what, what to expect. And, you know, it still, it still blew us away. And, you know, I, I think that speaks volumes to, you know, the, their game experience and their game ops and, you know, really just anything. Like, it, it's just... I think also for you and I, it's also just like really refreshing to see 
a game <laughs> game experience and a game ops that you know just really nails it. And it doesn't give you a sloppy BJ during the game. Have you? I don't really do love to do that. Yeah. So uh, that that's something and, and that that's, I didn't notice. They they were not called the best fans. No. In the NHL, they were not. Uh, they were not given any kind of birthright on uh, being hockey fans like Wild fans right. are. Right, and <laughs> it's just a slipper. But it's just like <laughs> they just didn't pander yes. to their fans. Like they just they just went with their game experience. Like yeah. they treated everyone as like you're probably from out of town, so we're just gonna have <laughs> fun with this. And they did. Yeah. It was great fun. And that's what a hockey game should be. And it, it, we just don't need that useless pandering that a wild fan gets. And I'm sorry. Like, you, you want to turn us off now, that's fine. Like, I don't give a rat's ass. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't need to be pandered to. Just give it to me straight. Like, just, Christ, have fun with it. Like, why does game ops have to be this difficult? Like, 2013-14 playoffs with the Avalanche, like, everyone was like, the Wild need, they need a new scoreboard. They need better game ops. Well, the Wild got a new scoreboard, but clearly game ops was never no. part of the upped budget. Like, they never gave <laughs> two craps about enhancing the game op experience. They gave two craps about enhancing the... Sloppy BJ experience that we get <laughs> with our ice every bloody day. Oh my god! Like, ah, uh, yeah. It, it's just so frustrating. Like you go, you go to other places, and you're just like, the game experience is nice. Like it's refreshing. Oh. Like especially when you come out here to the West Coast. Yeah. They don't give a crap. No. They don't give a crap where you're from or, you know, who your who your parents are, who you played hockey with at some point. They just they just put it out there, yeah. and I like that. I don't I don't need to be pandered to. That's no. that's what drives me up a tree. No. Try to take in the casual fan. Don't give me that R ice bullshit. Yeah. I, I will say I went to San Jose and I was pretty underwhelmed by the experience there, but only because I'd heard it was so good. I heard that it was so legendary and the shark tank and you hear all this stuff. And I mean granted I was on a it was a weeknight game against the Canucks, so not a whole lot going on, but uh I was very underwhelmed. But however, and the Phoenix Coyotes clearly underwhelmed, um, but Tampa, I've talked. You know, I, I actually pod, I recorded from Tampa when I was there last winter. That was phenomenal. Here, in Vegas was phenomenal, uh, and it's because they just let their fans enjoy a hockey game. You know, their fans don't need to be told all of this crap about how wonderful they are and how deeply rooted this team. You know, it's like let's be honest, the Twin Cities isn't the best hockey market. In the U.S., even, you know, we've um, we've got an NHL hockey market. I will say we're the best hockey market. We we attend more Bantam games, I think, than any state on the planet. But we don't, you know, that doesn't make us great NHL fans. Look at the North Stars attendance. You know, like, the, where do you get off giving the fans, you know, such a hard on about themselves when there's statistical evidence to the otherwise? Like, <laughs> it's not I'm that sorry, good of an NHL market. I'm sorry, but at if all the pro like. The four major pro sports teams in Minnesota are at their best, and they're in the playoffs. Yeah. Here is the ranking of care by Minnesota fans. Vikings, one. A giant twins chasm. two. A giant, giant chasm that yeah. cannot be covered. There is. The twins. Like, the Hoover Dam. Yeah. <laughs> the twins. twins. two. Another giant chasm. Yeah. Another massive giant chasm. you have the Wild at three which is very close with the wolves like i'm yes. not well i'm wolves. not disputing like the wolves i'm not trying to put them down it's very close i think but it's I, neck I, and I neck think, honestly I, right and I, I think the wild just get the slim edge in that regard maybe yeah but it, it's like you can flip a coin like yeah. they did yep. for the overtime of nfl playoffs <laughs> <laughs> yes you know that's that's how close it is and so i'm sorry like minnesota isn't a hawk like the twin cities isn't a full blown hockey market. No. And if you disagree with me, flip your radio station to the goddamn FM dial. <laughs> Turn on that station and you tell me this is a full on hockey market. It's not. Tell me what they talk about yeah. there for majority of the time and try to give me that argument. I'm sorry. Like that's that's how it is. Yeah. 
and you, you know, you probably have another thirty minutes to share with me on the <laughs> FM dial. But no, I won't. I won't even dive into that. Just, People know how I feel about it, that. Just get it. Deal with it. Christ. Yeah, I think that I think if they focused more, and our whole entire point is that. I think the the wild could the, focus more on their game ops right. and less the point on their is, fans. Don't pander. Stop yeah. pandering. More on more on entertaining everyone in the building, and less on like trying to solve some complex that Minnesota hockey fans have. Like st- stop with that. And and you know, you're just a fan. Like that's what we're here tonight in Vegas. They're just fans. This just fans of the team. That's it. They weren't you know the special. Worry. This is the worry that I still get, and I feel like it's just been a tone setter ever since the Wild came back, is that they're so afraid to lose another hockey team that they have to completely pander the fans like this. Well, could, I'm, I don't know that this team would move again. Right. And I don't think, I don't think that's them. a possibility and at this, this point. Would lose it again. But, but I feel like at, at this point... They're just still like the the pandering is so much, and I just feel like yeah. you're so worried about trying to be what the last team was not. Yeah, and just it, it has to stop. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I I don't need to be pandered to like that. And that's 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 our opinion. Yeah. Like, and if that's not your opinion, that's fine. Like, we can argue about that. But yeah. I don't need to be told that we're great. We're really not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, yeah. my fiance will tell you that I'm not great at times, and when she calls me out, I will be the first to put up <laughs> my hand and say, yep, I am in the wrong. Yeah. I don't need to be told I'm great, and I'll tell you I'm not great. So that's how I feel about the Wild. I, I don't need to be told that I'm great. I just want to have an enjoyable time at the hockey game. And I, I think they can learn a lot from the Golden Knights on how to put on a game experience. I think so. the whole league can. Like, uh, and like I said, I had a good time in Tampa, but and you can't fully replicate no, everything you can't, about you can't. what they do in Vegas because it's Vegas. That it's pregame, the, the yeah. pregame thing is so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous here that it's going to turn off a lot of people, quite frankly. But it's so ridiculous because it's Vegas, and to me, I think it works because it's Vegas. Like. That's that made it fun. Like it was so, it was fun because it was so cheesy. Like it was so cheesy, but it was that like was part of the fun. Jamie and I was just don't not think, amused. I know that's what I mean. It's not for everyone. I, and I think if you think that it's supposed to be something good, you're going to be disappointed. You should think that it's going to be something entertaining, and and just be like it's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be over the top because it's Vegas, and that's just how they they operate. And that's why I think what makes it good. So. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think other teams can exactly replicate it, but I do think that uh, you know there's a lot that other teams can learn, namely the Wild, from from the Vegas game operations. All right, that can do it for us. That uh, we're gonna go back out onto the Vegas Strip and have a good time before we get to leave tomorrow. So, <laughs> uh, that can wrap it up. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, again, apologies for the. Kind of abrupt change in scenery that we had <laughs> early on in the show. Free G A T G. Yeah, that was that was very much out of our control. We obviously didn't even have a clue that that was going to happen. So that the first, you know, yeah, that's another first in this podcast illustrious history of you know somehow getting bent over, but <laughs> whatever. Um, follow Ben on Twitter at Ben Remington. Follow me on Twitter at Giles Farrell. Podcast Twitter at G A T G Wild Podcast, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, Lipson, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all that good stuff. Uh, ZoneCoverage.com slash wild for Ben and I's written content. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that will uh, do it for us. We will be back again next week in kind of a more regular show setting. Kind of had a little special, special show setting here so we didn't get to some of our usual. Uh, topics du jour if you will or but, bits uh, yeah so that uh that again that'll do it for us this week we'll be back again uh next week and uh have a good week later
that's not resiliency. You're making it sound like we're good. That's all. I'm done.